Wait, we got this. I'm going to return, in this case, so if it's a URL, then if I have a URL popover controller, then no, do not perform this segue, because there's already a popover up. Otherwise, I could just say yes, but actually I'm going to do something a little trickier. I'm going to say, if I have a U image URL, then put it up. Otherwise, also don't put it up. See what I did there? Two reasons not to put do that URL segue. If I don't have any photo showing, then that's one reason. Other, otherwise, or if I have a pop-up already up. Else, now this is interesting, I have an else case here, which is super should perform. Okay, so if, I don't, if I'm not preventing it, then I'm going to let my super class, UI view controller, decide whether it should do this, UR, this segue, which it's always going to say yes, pretty much. But Okay, this should be returned. Okay, so let's see if that fixes all our problems. All right, so let's go back to Rio. Here we are in Rio. Let's click URL. Excellent. URL again, 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 again. It's not doing it. Click away. Fine. Fix all our problems. Okay? There is a subtle problem still here, which I'm not going to fix because time. I need to get to the maps here. But if I go to portrait mode and show the URL, watch what happens if I click photographer over here to show those photographers. Oh, the URL thing didn't go away. I thought if I clicked away from it, it's supposed to go away. And the answer is, if you click in the same bar that the URL thing is, then it does allow you to click. That's the thing in the slides that I talked about called pass-through views. So this whole bar is part of the pass-through views. And the real bad thing about this is, if I click on a different photo, it's showing me a different photo, but it's not updating the URL. So this is really bad. So I'm going to fix this in the code I post. Actually, let's just fix it right now. Easier to show you. I'm going to do this. Whenever someone sets my image to something new, okay, call set image, I'm going to, this is in my image view controller, I'm going to dismiss any popover controller that I have. Okay? So that way, if someone brings up that thing on the right and they click, at least I'll put away my URL. Okay? I could actually have some code here that updated the URL view controller and made it change. That wouldn't be that hard. I would just keep, it tr keep track of it. The only problem is that would be then inconsistent between this portrait mode and this mode. Because here, when I'm click if I had URL up here, if I click over here, it makes the URL go away. Okay? Because this is, over here is now no longer in the same bar as the URL. So I want my behavior at least to be somewhat consistent. So I'll make it so that when I click on something new, it makes the URL go away. Okay. Okay, nice big long demo. I will, of course, post all of this. Now you know how to do popover controllers. You should really have a good handle on using those core data table view controllers by now, I hope. Oh, I promised I would do a universal app. Look how easy this is. Okay, I'm going to do my iPhone by just, here's my iPad. I'm going to take this, copy it, go over here to my iPhone one, get rid of this thing, paste, okay, go back to iPad, get this image view controller which I need, uh, put, go over here, paste it, we can find space for it, paste, fine, there it is, put it up here, just need to make the segue to it, control, drag, it's a push segue, boom, we're done, now iPhone will work, okay? You can come up after class if you want to see it working, but that's all there is. So a lot of times when you're working on an iPhone and iPad UIs, you'll get one working, then you just copy and paste back to the other one. You get that one maybe working with some new feature, copy and paste the appropriate things back to the other one. See what I mean? You can kind of go back and forth between pretty, pretty straightforwardly. Okay, back to the slides. Here we go. Lecture 14. There it is. Okay. So we're not going to get all the way through the maps stuff today, which is fine, because I have a little bit of time at the beginning of the next lecture. And then I'm going to be doing the map uh, demo in the next lecture anyway, so it'll be kind of fresh in your mind. So any questions about all that big demo I just did? It all sounds good? It's understandable? OK. All right, map kit. So basically, I'm going to be talking about map kit here. But before I talk about map kit, I have to talk about another framework, which is a non-UI framework which kind of underlies the map kit framework called core location. So core location is a framework, has a bunch of objects in it that have to do with where is this device in the universe. 
okay? Where on the planet, what, you know, where, in terms of GPS or other factors determining where it is, where is it? Okay, where on Earth? So, um, its basic object is a CL location that includes a coordinate, which is, you know, latitude and longitude, altitude, okay? Horizontal and vertical accuracy, we'll talk about why that's important, timestamp, speed, course, things like that, okay? That's the CL location object. Um, this object uh, has this very important property called coordinate, and that is a C struct, CL location coordinate 2D, and inside is just CL location degrees, which is essentially a double, which is latitude, and another one is longitude, okay? And then the altitude is in meters. Okay, so that, this is the basic object in core location. So the question is, how do uh, some, uh, oh, sorry, let me talk about accuracy, very important. So um, when you get a location, you got it in a certain way that might have varying accuracy. If you got that location from GPS, it could be very accurate. If you got it by looking at local cell towers, it might be pretty inaccurate, right? It could be a mile off, actually. Um, if you got it that way, and there's ways in between. On Stanford campus, you, you can actually get it by using Wi-Fi. It can look around, see what Wi-Fi things are near you, and tell by that where you are. Kind of scary, huh? So it knows where you are. And that works even if you're indoors or whatever. So um, uh, now it only works for public Wi-Fi nodes, et cetera, but at Stanford, these Wi-Fi nodes are all well known, so it knows where you are. Um, and you specify this accuracy using one of these KCL location accuracy constants. And so there's best for navigation. If you want that kind of accuracy, that's going to use your battery because it's going to be constantly doing GPS. So that would be only if your phone was plugged in, like you're in your car and it's plugged into the cigarette lighter or whatever. Uh, I guess they have USB ports nowadays in cars. But anyway, uh, you would want power there. Then there's best, which is also GPS, but not quite as power hungry. And then all the way down using Wi-Fi and these other things to less and less accuracy. But however the location was found, it will also report to you what accuracy it used, okay? Both in terms of horizontally and then altitude-wise vertically. Um, understand that accuracy means power. The more accuracy you ask for, the more power you're going to use, okay? So ask for the least accuracy your application can deal with so that you use as little power as possible. Very important point. Okay, uh, some other properties there, I'm not really going to talk about them. You have the slide for them, obvious things. Speed is calculated by seeing all the points that you're moving through time, and it can calculate your speed, uh, things like that. Um, so how do you get one of these core location guys? Okay, I want to get a core location, core location object that says where I am right now. And the answer is you use this class called CL Location Manager. Okay, so you instantiate a core location manager, CL location manager, and you're going to set some things up about it, and then you're going to tell it to start telling you where you are. And it's got a delegate, and it will start telling that delegate where you are. So that's basically how it works. Now, you can simulate where you are, by the way, in the debugger with this little thing down by the um, debug uh, bar, place where the pause and all that. You can just simulate where you are. You can even add places that you are if you want to, like I have a whole series of locations that you want to check running through to see if your application is working. So this is a really cool way to simulate uh, being somewhere. Um, all right, so CL Location Manager, how do we use this thing to get our location? You create it, you check to see what hardware you have because every different device, iPhones 4s, iPhone 5s, iPads, have different hardware in them for figuring out where they are. And so you're going to check to see what, what's available. Then you're going to uh, add, set this delegate to be any object you want. And then you're going to configure it for what kind of location updates you want, accuracy, things like that. And then you're going to start it running. And it's going to start reporting to you um, where you are. So what kinds of location monitoring are available? There's accuracy-based uh, reporting. Okay, so that's you specify an accuracy, and it'll tell you to that accuracy where you are. Okay, uh, there's updates that you can get where it'll send you a message only when a significant change in position has happened. Okay, imagine maybe it's using cell towers or something there. Okay, or if Wi-Fi is fired up for other reasons, it might be able to be using Wi-Fi, right? But it's probably not going to use GPS. Okay, so only to tell you a significant change has occurred. You also have region-based updates. Put a little circle around the dry cleaners. When you walk by or drive by, it'll tell you, oh, you're by the dry cleaner. 
Okay, so that's region, and you can set up a little region, circular regions, beacons, we'll talk about those. And then you can also monitor your heading. Okay, so wh which way am I walking? Okay, and that might be using a compass, might be using just GPS, it just depends on what the device has. So the first thing I said was, you gotta check the capability. So here's a whole bunch of methods, I'm not gonna go through them for time reasons, but you need to check these, okay? Uh, because, for example, a user might have turned off location services for you. Okay, so you gotta know, you gotta deal with that, either ask them to turn it back on, again, there's this restricted thing for this too, um, uh, or whatever you wanna do, or do some different thing in your app if you work without those location updates on or whatever. You might be on a device that doesn't have the hardware you need to do what you want, so this, you need to all check all this, okay, when you first create your location manager. Um, so then getting it, uh, you can ask a location manager, where am I right now? Okay, kind of poll it, we never do that. We use this delegate thing. So let's talk about how the delegate thing works. First, you specify the accuracy, okay? This is a location manager property, desired accuracy. I showed you the accuracies before. Specify that. And then also you can specify a distance filter. In other words, until the user use, moves at least this far, don't even tell me, okay? So if they don't go at least 100 meters or a kilometer, don't tell me uh, about it. So that saves battery too. The chip, the GPS chip, in these devices, especially the newer ones, really awesome. A lot of this stuff that you specify here gets loaded into the chip, and the chip by itself is calculating where you are and whether you went far enough and all that stuff, and then waking the phone back up. The whole phone can sleep, and the GPS is still watching. And so if you can tune these to be as minimal as possible, you will save a ton of battery in the device, because only that GPS chip will be watching you know, what's going on. Uh, okay, so then you start getting the updates by just calling start updating location and your delegate will start getting sent messages based on the accuracy and the filter that you specify for distance, okay? What does that uh, delegate method look like? Location manager did update to location from location is one of the ones. There's actually some other ones that you could get sent, so you want to check the documentation on this one. Um, but this is the basic one where it's saying, okay, I got a new location, here it is. That location, of course, will have accuracy and all timestamp, all these other things in there. And it just gives you the from location just for your own convenience, so you don't have to keep it if you just want to uh, see the difference, okay? So that's it. It's quite simple, actually, to use this location manager. It's also quite simple to drain the ba user's battery in about an hour, okay? So be careful and know what you're doing here. There's a similar API for heading, for tracking the heading. Um, the delegate can report errors, and this is one case, a lot of times you see me in my demos, I just say null for the NS error, and I ignore errors, and sometimes that's okay, like if I'm doing a Flickr fetch, and if it fails, I just don't care, because I know I'm going to be doing another fetch in 20 minutes, so I'll just let it fail, um, although even there, I probably want to check it, and if it keeps failing over and over, then I need to maybe get the user involved, okay, but here you really want to check the errors. Okay, and again, for time reasons, I don't have to go through time to go through the details. There's more than just these errors that can occur, um, but there are certain things you need to do in certain of these errors if you want to really be a good core location uh, getting uh, app. Um, background: Can you get these location updates in the background? Okay, I promised I was going to talk about this, and I even have a slide about it. And the answer is you can. Okay, uh, you can even sign up to be the kind of app that gets the that your location manager will just run in the background normally, okay? It's the same place, remember when we went and did the background fetches, we had to go to our project settings and we click that switch, there's another switch there that is location. And when you do that, you'll start getting this, okay? But that's really for apps like, uh, you know, a fitness app where you're going off to do a mile run and your phone's in the pocket and it's tracking your progress and you've tuned it to, you know, coalesce.